Welcome everyone. We're on our session 10 of our Legacy and Leadership Spring Series and today's topic is going to be coaching and planning sessions. Um, it is a key to director development and it is an important thing for us to focus on. So last semester we talked about the skills that we need to become a director. This semester we're talking about developing past directors, so coordinator and senior ranks and beyond. Um, and we know that a key factor is being duplicatable and creating new directors in our organization. So we're going to talk about the um, periodic planning and strategy meeting and coaching and really get into those aspects of, of what we do and it's really going to be exciting it's good stuff so here we go okay did I skip that oh, other no. one no you're there it's me oh, okay okay, okay. Next <laughs> slide. Sorry. okay. <laughs> I'm so I did them twice now I'm confused uh, number <laughs> one when getting a new star, a distributor started this is uh, your very first I call it the game plan your very first strategy session. So you have someone who says, I'm going to build a business. You've got to sit down and figure out what that looks like. You've got to get a roadmap, right? And so that's uh, number one. Number two is, and this is kind of intuitive, but we should be having a strategy session for ourselves and our downline every January, especially now that we have the con or the incentive trips being announced. Um, we got to get our ducks in a row. We got to figure out what's going to take to get what we want to get this year. So that's another one. After global conference is another time that you want to have a very good uh, run of strategy sessions and planning planning sessions with your leaders because that is the perfect time to take all of the growth and the new things they've poured into themselves and really uh, leverage that for the next coming year so that is key but if you look at number four there it's also important to have these ongoing planning sessions if you have someone who's working towards director or someone who's really working towards another rank these really should be monthly because you need to assess and um, make sure you're on track with the the plan that you have in place so there's kind of a good framework of when to yeah, visit that's these planning very good. sessions yeah because without planning sessions it's very difficult for for us or the people we're coaching to move forward so at, yes. at least those four times a year we want to be doing that okay okay Harper <laughs> hello <laughs> I'm you <muted you. laughs> go ahead um sorry my go to meeting wasn't working and so I can I can only see the the PowerPoint that I have I can't see anything that you're showing okay so well, well I'm you. just going off of what I have so if you anyway. oh, okay <laughs> um, so, 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 so we're talking about coaching an important yes. skill of leadership you got that one I'm yeah I'm following along I just um, <laughs> okay. it's not I don't know what my the problem was with my computer today anyway okay. yes um, coaching is an important skill of leadership and um, it really um, I have been blessed to have been coached very well and um, so I'm very thankful to be learning these things um, as I go and have been um, just so blessed by that and so um, these are things that I have learned and that I am learning to do um, with my downline um, because in order to be an effective coach um, you'll want to know the following you want to know for yourself how to help your business partner set their goals um, what activities are most effective in generating 2000 PV, um, what skills you want to develop to be an effective coach and mentor, and as I said, um, you'll, we need coaching ourselves. We need to utilize the people, um, whether it's our upline or um, other, you know, Shackley colleagues who are in this amazing business where people work together and help each other. Um, we have accountability calls set up with people from different teams. It's just that kind of... Um, you know, in our accountability circles, we have so many different opportunities to be coached. Um, and that's definitely important because that is one of the best ways that we learn to coach others. And we want to know what resources are available to us. Um, we have all of these trainings are archived. Um, there are at Better Future Starts Today or at Bob's Files. There are so many things that we have to teach us how to get these skills because we need to these are the things that we need to know in order to be an effective coach. And uh, for the last several weeks we've been talking about the Facebook events and um, we wanted to show you the way uh, Michelle Parrott now is using it to to set up Facebook events with her customers. So Harper you want to show this post that she just made. Sure, and this is, you know, Michelle is really, really wonderful at using Facebook and social media, and um, she's just, this is something that I have learned a lot from her, and, um, you know, she is, 
and this is a good example for a lot of us, she isn't um, moving between, she just moved from London to Ohio and she's going to be moving to Florida. So she's, you know, it's not something easy for her to do to just figure out how to, you know, host some meetings in a home or, so she is doing what she has available to her, which is awesome and she's really thinking it through and so she posted this. Um, just offering an opportunity for these very successful Facebook events for um, to host them for someone else. Just like you would say to someone, let's host an in-home meeting in your home and you invite your friends. It's the same thing. So she posted this um, on her members page. So we talked about that a few weeks ago, how some people have a group that's for all their members um, to share information. Not a business page, not a personal page, but a group for their members. And um, so she posted this so that they can host a Facebook meeting. And it, it just like we've been talking about, it, what it does is it um, increases that circle of influence even just on Facebook so that she is presenting her Facebook meeting to a bunch of people that her friend invites. Um, so this was a great um, opportunity for her just to continue to grow her business and um, yeah, she's she's hosting a bunch of great events. She's, it's good. she's on fire with this. So the reason we wanted to show you this is that it's another example of understanding as a leader what are the resources that are working for people today and the clever way in which they're doing it. Okay, Carver. Yes, so our objectives today um, for coaching and planning sessions um, is to learn how to do that and it, it's key to developing leaders. Um, so we need to today, our objectives are to understand the role of the leader in coaching in our business, um, both for directors and beyond, um, to understand that the role of the leader um, is to be a maker of leaders. And I learned this being very, in high school, I remember um, a leader talking, saying that, you know, a really good leader can disappear and everything continues. And so obviously no one's going to disappear from Shackley. Um, but if anything, you know, but if there was a, a emergency where they had to step back for a couple months or whatever, that a real leader, everything just keeps going because Good they've point. created yeah. people to be leaders. And that always really stood out to me um, as a as a, a piece of that. But um, so we want to also define our role as a mentor and a coach and we want to talk, review skills um, to be a good coach and we also want to talk about the pitfalls of coaching. Um, so those are our objectives and the things that we want to accomplish today. Excellent. And so several um, way, years ago, many years ago, we came across this really interesting man, Joel Barker. He was a futurist and he had a series of videos, he had a book. And he, he talked about the role of the leader in one of them, and it has stuck with me my entire Shackley career because he said, he, if you th here are the four par parts of the role that we play in the beginning and as we go along every year, it's about setting the vision. And we have the quintessential example of that in Roger Barnett. Mm -hmm. He does it every time we come. That's what happens at the Global Conference. We hear about his vision for the coming year for the company. But his visions are so huge. You know, I mean, he talks about Shackley receiving a Nobel Prize a peace prize because it will be seen that it is one of the greatest forces for social improvement in the world. I mean, he he just he just so believes in the goodness of the work that we do and doubling the company and all of that. Um, and then you know, when we know what our vision is, if our vision is to pay forward the good things that have happened to us because of Shackley, then then we share our vision, our our reason why we are ha why we have a Shackley business and are devoting our lives to this, and we use that when we assemble the team and invite people then to join us, to join our work, to join our team, to work together arm in arm, and we help each other. In today's world, that is very appealing. And then, then we move into the empowerment part. Then it is the the role of the leader to empower the team, training them. Um, passing on to them the things that we're learning. The, the One of the things you learn about leaders, anything you read about them, is that they are continual learners. You never arrive. You're, yeah. They're always reading. They're always learning. I mean, I it just warms my heart when you go to Shackley events and you'll see our 85-year-old leader sitting there 
for a weekend to learn how they can do it better. I just mm. think it's amazing. And then to create and sustain momentum. So it's like you don't arrive you know, after you get your team all assembled and everybody's off and going. Then our job is to create and sustain momentum with them. Shackley does it with us by these cute little pop-up promotions they give us all every now and then <laughs> and recognition and all of that. That's all part of it. Okay, mm -hmm. Lisa? Very good. Well, and I have to say, uh, we had our first groundswell back in February, and someone took a picture of Del Johansson just studiously Aww. taking notes in his notebook. And Del is a super huge master coordinator, mm. and I just, it, I loved it. I loved it. It embodied everything about a good leader. So you are so right. Um, so part of our role as a coach is to keep the vision uh, not only fresh and in front of ourselves, but also in front of those people that we coach. So we really want to um, aim high for the best candidates for our team and their business team. Um, and, but here's an important thing. When you have someone that's growing in their business, they're going to need to anchor themselves to your belief. So you need to let your belief and your confidence, not only in yourself and in the company and the products, but in them, be evident and strong. So as they're kind of developing their own confidence and belief that they can anchor to yours. And I think it's a big piece of being a good leader because you allow them some space to, to grow in their own, um, their own strength, but not have to be there instantly, but they still can grow. So it really has to be authentic. Don't, you know, don't make up stuff. But it's really, uh, as you're working with people, important that you let them know that you see great things in them and you mm. see that they can really do this because they can mm. stand in that until they can see it. Mm. Right? Very so the good. coach is their cheerleader. Uh, you're going to build confidence in new areas in them. You're going to. I did a meeting for a gal last night. She's just adorable, by the way, and um, she's kind of a referral partner builder. Uh, but she is so good to the people that she shares with, and she's a massage therapist. And I just told her, I said, you bring such goodness into people's lives, and you can see her growing and thriving from that type of confidence and speaking into her. And that's what a coach can do. So. A coach um, is also going to paint the picture of what their life will be like on this journey. And um, I love the part that we teach and do early on when we're, when we're strategizing with someone, making sure their why is there and that they've shared it with you because you will repeatedly bring them back to that why and remind them that all of this is worth it because look, of what, look what you're creating, look what you're doing. So. Great. Good coaches learn to keep the business simple. This is probably one of the most important, most critical um, things that we can learn to do. And as it says, people go off on tangents. You know, I can sit here today and I can hear about Ashley and how she's doing all this great stuff with Shackley 180. And then I hear about Michelle and how she's doing all this stuff with Facebook. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to say, oh, well, so-and-so is doing this and it works. Maybe I should do that. And then people go mm -hmm. off and they try these different things. As a leader, it is our role, our responsibility to help keep people centered, keep them focused. What is it that they want from Shackley and mm. what is the best way for them to achieve that? And mm. it might be what somebody else is doing, uh, you know, successfully, but it might not be. It might be what, you know, again, what, what is going to work for them. And it's always about the process. You know, if we keep people focused on the process, then the mechanisms they use to do those things in the process should, again, fit them, their personality, their lifestyle. So we, we help them identify their dream, as Lisa said. They make a list of everyone they know. We teach them how to invite people to learn about Chackley. Um, they learn what resources uh, are, are available, what manner uh, that they're going to use to present business and uh, products. And then it's about teaching them to have follow-up and offer good service. And I love what you said, Joe, is when you use a video, a video never has a bad day. Yeah. For yeah. <laughs> webinars, too. You know, that. Okay, and look at the fly-in. Keep calm and follow the process. Absolutely. Okay. Harper. Yes. Well, and this this is so true, and I feel like there are so many different ways to do things, and there's so much information, and I feel like, you know, we've, we've spoken about um, in the past about just the value of the three-way call, and just mm -hmm. that like how simple it is just to share with some, you know, like just find, you know, there's someone in need, connect them with someone who knows, like, we, you know, just how simple it can be because it really can get overwhelming with all the information. So I've seen this and this, this is a really, really good point. Yeah. Um, but oh. create, sorry, 
creating and sustaining momentum. Um, <laughs> so is that the slide it's on? Yes, you're good. <laughs> I forgot you can't see it, right? <laughs> um, so it's really important um, to stay close, especially right after someone becomes a new director. Um, becoming a new director can be, um, it's exciting, but it can be, you know, intense. Like all of a sudden, you you are a leader, and you have um, all these opportunities, and and um, you know, you're you're looking at that that 2,000 PV, and so just to remind them of. Um, all of the things we talked about remind them of their why and share that confidence that you have in them. And I know I've experienced this quite a bit. You know, I've called Barb many a time to to um, you know when I was a new director and Moira and Pam to to regain that confidence and um, so and keeping keeping the vision in front of them. And I think that this is so important and um, just to continue to remind your team about the vision of your team, the vision of Shackley, um, and their why and their vision. Um, helping, the, helping your leaders to continue to do the activities um, that keep their group building because um, it is a process and it is a process to learn how to lead a team. It's a process of, of learning how to um, coach a new distributor and so staying with your directors and continuing to share with them and being available um, for whether it's a three-way conversation with their downline or whether it's just advice on how to share with their downline, um, but helping them continue to to do these strategy sessions. And it took me a lot of times doing a strategy session with an upline and my downline to really feel confident in putting together one. And so that's just a process that um, and lead by example. I think it's easy um, to try to manage things. I mean, for me, especially as a young mom, where that's pretty much what I do all day is manage things. Right. Um, but, but, <laughs> but in a business, not not leading that way, leading by example and encouragement, and um, and so it's very it's very different. But it can be something to remind yourself of. And so just as I learn these things and I learn them from my upline, I like to I just share them with my downline, and that's excellent. Okay. And Harper, one of the key things that you've been saying is learn. I learned. I'm learning. Mm. Um, and that, oh, that yeah. is so important <laughs> because the, the skill of leadership can be learned. And um, this book, Bob Goshen wrote the book, The Power of Layered Leadership, Success or Failure of Organizations, rests on one simple fact, the ability to develop leaders. And, you know, if we want to learn leadership, one we can you know we can we can study it we can read about it but i think also if you if you know of people leaders in shackley that you admire and respect and you'd want to know more about what they do how they do how they think then maybe you arrange to meet up with them for coffee at the global conference if there's someone in your community who's an outstanding leader and that you you really respect call them up invite them out to lunch ask them some questions you know how do they you know what is their thinking? How did they learn to be the kind of leader they are? Um, so there are many avenues open for us to be to to learn about good leadership. Well, and this is this is so valuable. And um, even last year, I had come to a kind of a place where, I, you know, I kind of just a plateau, and I knew there was a um, a leader in Shackley who had kind of been through where I was in, in the parenting realm and who I really respected, and, you know, but I know her time is valuable, and I know her time is um, really important to her team, and so I called her and I said, would you spend, you know, 30 minutes to an hour just kind of talking with me through some of these things, and then I would love to spend... 30 minutes to an hour talking to some of your young moms, um, you know, because she's not in that stage of life anymore. So, oh, so to kind of, yeah, to kind of share, like, mm -hmm. you know, I know your time is valuable with your team, but so anyway, so, and it worked out really well, and it was just a huge blessing, so. Okay. Yeah, and she was probably honored. There's no greater honor, I don't think, than for someone to be asked to, you know, mm -hmm. share some of their thoughts and ideas, you know. And even just observing. You know, yeah. With. Harper, yeah. I went to the next slide. Leadership, the positive, <laughs> progressive, ethical influence on others. Um, and and this is something that what I when I always when I talk about my Shackley story, I talk about how Shackley gave me the opportunity to be to have leadership, to learn leadership. Um, it was something I always desired in my previous jobs, but never was given the opportunity. And so it it has been a blessing to develop 
leadership skills to learn about them to grow from my you know my uplines from Barb and Pam and Moira to learn about leadership and so this has been um, something that I have learned so much about and continue to learn but that leadership um, is the positive progressive ethical influence of others um, it really built good leadership builds people up um, and I know that um, that that the leadership that I have seen has done that for me and it encourages and edifies them so they can duplicate that attitude in others which is exactly um, what I've experienced and being able to then share that with my downline um, edifying them in front of others um, when introducing them um, I find that this is um, this has been so so helpful for me and trying to to share that with my team and really take opportunities to to edify them and to talk about them and not only to them uh, about their skills and the confidence that I have in them but to others as well um, looking for opportunities to let them shine to be in the limelight to um, have an opportunity to share and it's amazing to see um, when someone is given that opportunity how mm -hmm. much they can just expand um, their confidence and and everything that you know that they can be that they can do it um, and um, the true measure of a leader is how well he or she mentors people so that personal leadership is handed off to others and the same thing just creating new leaders and passing that on and when we're able to to take what how we've been led and share that with them and then they can share that with others and um, it's it's a very positive cycle it can be a negative cycle if it's not done well and so we just the instead doing it the positive cycle can really create a very um, a very strong team and a very strong group of people that um, that is encouraged and edified and does that with other people too. Great, click. Mm -hmm. Um, and because coaches need to be positive, or no one else will want them around. Um, mm -hmm. I think that that is important to become the person everyone looks forward to being around. And um, I mean, take Barb. Who doesn't want to spend time with Barb? <laughs> I mean, I think everyone can say that they enjoyed being on these calls and listening to Barb and Joe talk, and Barb mm -hmm. happens to be my, my upline. But, um, but being someone who makes everyone else feel appreciated and more confident. And, um, and when you have that kind of leadership, you know, and just making sure, like Lisa was saying, um, let my confidence in them be their anchor and reminding them of that confidence, reminding them um, of the things that, that you see in them that you believe in and, and letting them be their, that, their anchor when they're discouraged um, because that, that will happen. I, when I get discouraged and I call my online and they remind me of those things, it is, it is important. Um, and I love this. Sit Today you will influence at least 12 people, your mate, your kids, fellow drivers, employees, your boss. Um, and so is my influence positive or negative? Um, and I think that it's a good question to ask what, you know, in wh wherever you're at, and this is how it specifically um, relates to Shackley, but if I were my downline, would I pick me to be their upline leader? Mm -hmm. um, and, that's, I, I, and I inserted that because I took a course a number of years ago, and one of the things they asked us was if I were my kids would I pick me to be their mom <laughs> if I were my spouse would I pick me to be their wife mm -hmm. if I were my my Shackley distributors would they pick me to be their upline it's a well, it, go ahead oh it, it's an interesting practice I have been listening to these um, blog posts on leadership or blog posts these um podcasts on leadership by Michael Hyatt and I highly highly recommend them um you know there are a few that are less applicable because they're more in a corporate setting but most of them are just amazing and he actually kind of broke off from his leadership aspect and did one on um, becoming your spouse's best friend or becoming mm. the best spouse and this is the practice and this applies here too because and they said like it applies to to many kinds of relationships make a list on like you were like you were applying on Craigslist to to find a spouse and all the things that you would want them to be you know make a mm. list of what the ideal spouse would be and then become that mm -hmm. like so so in your mind think what would be you know what is the ideal upline what would I want my mm -hmm. upline to do yeah. and then yeah. Come mm. that upline. So it was a very good. I mean, it was very encouraging, you know, in marriage for me as well, but also just in all aspects of life, like to to think that way. 
Mm, I've got it. I'm writing that one down. down. Go go to the next one, Harper. Um, So handling setbacks and disappointments, because we all know that like this is life, and so knowing how to um, to coach coach through that. So staying po- uh, focused on the positive results we desire, mm-hmm. um, and understand how you personally um, handle setbacks, um, and how to. Um, for me, it's been um, you know a process of of really learning how to take my thoughts captive and think and and how I relate to setbacks in my own life how I've been encouraged you know my husband is is so good about encouraging me to stop and not let um, you know something negative make a rabbit trail of negative thoughts but just to take that mm-hmm. captive and um, focus on the positive and and so and being able to figure that out in my own life has been able to help me help others who do the same thing um, mm-hmm. who can take one negative thing that happens and like mm-hmm. and then this could happen then this could happen then this could happen mm-hmm. but instead mm-hmm. just capturing that mm-hmm. um, and then and um, it is like how do we respond and these are a lot I mean I continue to um, to learn a lot from these Michael Hyatt leadership podcasts and um, learning how to coach others through their setbacks um, be ready with what you're going to do to help them get through it to encouraging them with you know your own stories of how you responded or um, reminding them of their vision and reminding them sometimes it just takes um, knowing what's going da- on in your downlines business to remind them of all the good things that are going on um, mm-hmm. and help them focus on that because it can be easy for one small thing one mm-hmm. no to replace mm-hmm. the encouragement of um, of three yeses that and it's yesterday. and it's all part of the process. It's all part of the experience. Not everybody is going to say yes. Mm-hmm. And so don't be shocked. <laughs> it's okay. That's the part about loving people where they are. Mm-hmm. You know, they. Um, someone, uh, someone I was talking to yesterday was saying how they had spent a lot of time helping this person who had a health issue um, just introducing all the you know natural things they could do and telling them all the stories and then they still chose to do something that the doctor was doing and um, and she was really um, disappointed and upset it's like how goofy can they be I just told them all this stuff well you know when you've grown up in all your life and maybe your spouse or your parents or everybody around you is saying you have got to do what the doctor says are you crazy you know who are these people what do they right. know Right. You know, you don't know who's in their ear. And so mm-hmm. you can't argue with them. You mm-hmm. can't say, now, wait a minute. That's really ridiculous. You're going to go off and do what the doctor said after I just told you all this. We're going to argue? You know, that, we have found that that's not particularly um, <laughs> effective for good sales, you know. And so all you can do is love them where they are and say, I get it. Feel, felt, found. I used to feel that mm-hmm. way. Here's what I found. I get it. I, you know, there was a time, you know, my first pregnancy, I took prednisone. The whole pregnancy, never thought to question it. I was mm-hmm. too young, and I didn't know anything. It was my first baby. You're, you're scared. You're in the doctor's hands. You do whatever they say. So it just helps us have this wider, more accepting view of people is love them where they are. They can only see so far. But then you say, you know, if and when you decide you want to do this my door is always open that's the most beautiful way you can and same way so with disappointments when people handle it we're teaching them how to be bigger than themselves how to be more loving more accepting more patient and understand this person may come around they may not it it's meant to be the way it is so just let let go of it and don't keep replaying it in your mind very well done you know, Barb, this whole thing on setbacks and disappointments I think is crucial and it's something as a good leader that we can have that discussion with people early on in our strategy sessions, especially with business partners. And just say, well, you know, tell me a little bit about how you handle setbacks. Tell me about how disappointments affect you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then have a discussion around, well, what would be the best thing for me to do to help you through? Because there will be some of these setbacks. Mm-hmm. And you can, you know, you can program you can help them manage their expectations, but then you're going to know what to best mechanism is to help them through these things. Mm-hmm. That's, and that's very, that's very, that's a very good point. And guess what? Everybody 
who has advanced every master coordinator <laughs> has experienced it. So you know, my poor people, when, when they call with stuff like that, I, I usually start by laughing and say, "Well, <laughs> right. that's about yeah. time that happened to you." <laughs> right. Okay. All right. That, but and I think we learn too. I mean, I think there's no better way for us to learn how to handle to to deal with our own setbacks and disappointments mm -hmm. than the the time it, the time in encouraging someone else because it, you know if you listen to your own advice um, we'd all be <laughs> much better off and so being able to oh. <laughs> you know what I mean yeah I don't know what I have. Like, all right so sharing with someone go else, to that I'm like, <laughs> go to that next slide doctors of solutions love that <laughs> um, so leaders recover quickly from challenges and they become doctors of solutions. Um, so to respond and not react, relax and use your reasoning skills. Um, understand something good is going to come from the challenge. Um, it is our natural state of mind to lean toward the fear of and the negative when confronted with an obstacle. Um, and that that is true. And so um, really being able, like I said, to stop and stop that thought where it is and to, to not react but respond thoughtfully. Um, mm -hmm. Training our mind to look for solutions, um, to, to be creative. Um, we, we, if we move towards fear and doubt, we, we, all we see is that. And, um, you know, um, Barb talked to me once um, when I was, I said something, well, I can't do that, I can't do that. And she said, you know, have you ever um, said, you know, I can't find it, I can't find it. Whatever you're looking for, something you're looking for, you're like, you say, I can't find it. Well, then your brain just stops, and your brain uh -huh. stops looking for it. But if you say, hmm, I don't know where I could have put that, or can you help me find this, or something like that, then right. all of a sudden you, you say, now, where did I put that? Yes. yes. And yeah. so you, someplace. and then your brain starts <laughs> looking for, where did I put that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and in the case of, of our Shackley business, it's uh -huh. like, how could I have said that differently? Yes. Yeah. Well, um, and that's... Mm -hmm. That's a huge, one of the leadership podcasts I just listened to for Michael Hyatt was all about that. It was so good. And it was talking about how you can go into, a, you know, a, a meeting and, you know, nobody orders anything or responds. And you're just like, well, they did this and they just don't get it. And they, da, da, da. Instead, yep. you can be like, hmm, how could I have said this differently? And not that you're like blaming yourself, but think about, okay, what can I learn from this experience? How could That's I right. have done That's this differently? Right. And having that perspective um, is going to be much more positive for the future. Very good. Okay, now it's time we heard from Katie, <laughs> who is chasing around after a, um, a a baby who is on the move. Okay, <laughs> is this a, are you okay, Katie? In a good place to talk. Yeah, see things yeah. done now. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, all right. Well. Morning nap. All okay. right. So um, I love this because I think one of my love languages is actually words of affirmation. So. For me, what people say to me can, can have a big impact, and that can be hard in this business because we also know, like Harper and like Barb and everybody's been talking about this morning, when we have a no, sometimes it can, it can hurt a little bit. But learning to not take it personally, but also as, as we think about our words, it's very important that we use them wisely. So especially when we're thinking about when we're talking to either customers or when you're talking to your leaders, making sure that we complain up and praise down. So what I mean by that is what Harper was talking about, when we have a difficulty or when we're going through something, make sure to call your upline and complain or, or just, um, as Barb likes to say, empty your bucket. Um, and, and that's because we don't, we, we don't want to be discouraging to the people on our team. If I were to call one of my downlines and and just explain to them a difficult situation, they're going to get discouraged. And I don't want them to get discouraged. And so it's really the responsibility of our upline to remember to encourage us and to uplift us at that time. And I think that sometimes we do this unintentionally. Sometimes, and I'm sure I've been guilty of this before with certain things, but sometimes we, we unintentionally will perhaps um, say something that really could bring somebody down or bring a situation down or even bring the company down. I think um, it's so important people can can um, see in you your confidence in Shackley. And when we say something negative about the company or if we say something negative about the business, 
that really is going to play a big role, and people will remember that. So when you mentor others, your words should offer encouragement, not despair. They should edify and never put others down or damage their spirit. Um, if any of your words are used to put others down in order to build yourself up, you are far from being a leader, and this is very, very mm -hmm. true. I also like, when we think about words, to use words like, when I'm talking to one of my downlines who's trying to get to director, when you are director. Barb would do this mm -hmm. to me. My very first month of, of uh, becoming a distributor, Barb would say, oh, Katie, when you're a director, and I wanted to mm -hmm. laugh at her because I was thinking, oh, when I'm a director, like, Barb, I just started this. But she has done this for me for years, and Harper has done the same thing to me, and Moira and all my leaders have done the same thing to me. They believed in me even when there are times when maybe I didn't believe in myself. And so use the word when. Um, I'm so excited when I see you on stage this global, walking across stage as a director. I'm so excited when you qualify for the trip. Um, and really telling your team that they can get on these trips. I think that's so important that my leaders believed in me and told me that I could earn a, a trip with Shaftley. I did not think I could. I truly did not think I would be able to earn a trip. And and they, they believed in me, and they told me that. And so then I began telling myself that, and mm. I began believing in myself. Right, right. Mm. But as mm. we think about believing in ourselves, um, it's important that we realize that we have to work on ourselves first. And this is something that I still do to this day, and I will always do. Um, I have always made conferences a huge priority in my business because they have just been so um, – important to the growth of my business. So I, spring regionals last year, I was 38, 39 weeks pregnant. I literally could have gone into labor at the conference. <laughs> and, I it. And, I, and it was fun and it was enjoyable. And then we had global and I had a newborn. But you know what? My husband and I, and it was in California, we could have made every excuse not to go. But you know what? I loved that trip. It was such a fun time. And you know what? Bringing a newborn uh, he was about three months, I guess, at the time, but is really not that hard. They sleep a lot. And so yeah. I just did a conference, and what I love about all Shackley conferences is they just make it so welcoming to babies, and they make mm -hmm. you feel right at home for having a baby, and they're totally willing, you know, that you can nurse in the back or play in the back or help your, you know, put an ergo carrier on. And, and so just remember that, that conferences are so important to get to because they will help you grow. They will help you grow mentally. Um, it's so important. I love reading, although I wish, i got to be honest, I don't read as much as I used to. Um, but we've talked about before Rock Your Network Marketing Business by Sarah Robbins, how good of a book that is. Dave Ramsey has a great book on entree leadership. Um, and he has this saying that leaders are readers. And that's very true, that um, if you want to be a leader, you have to read. You have to keep up with things. Um, physically, you're setting an example for being active, um, for eating right, socially, for being around like-minded people. Spiritually, what I love about our business is that so many of us have similar faith in the Lord and that we are able to do this and honor and give glory to God, which is so great. Um, and good coaches first are good people. Um, and I think that that is definitely an example that, that we can set to people. Um, no one can perform beyond the way that they see themselves. And, again, going back to this trip analogy, when I first put in the DVD, when I first started with Shackley, I was like, oh, ha, ha, that's so great. People get on trips. Um, so that's <laughs> uh, little did I know that this was going to become a reality. And, again, it wasn't. there was nothing special that I did other than, I continued to do the little things every day that continued to build my business. And I, I stayed close, and I continue to stay close to my upline. So Barb was just saying, we were talking about this last night, and she's like, yeah, we still talk quite a few times a week. And that's true because the coaching never ends. It will never end. And, and I really appreciate that about our team and about Shackley is that um, we're always looking for ways to continually build the self-esteem of those that you lead and once people raise their self-esteem they raise their confidence and I, I gotta be honest one thing that I see is that sometimes we lack that confidence we're afraid to say something because we're afraid of what they're going to say or what they're going to think but I'll tell you nothing bad has ever happened to me when somebody has said <laughs> no or not yet you're going to be fine you're going to be okay you're going to you're going to live and I will tell you also <laughs> that 
the majority of people who told me not yet or told me no have eventually told me yes. The longer that I've been in this, the more and more people um, that have, for example, I had a friend who um, was going through and trying different health options, alternative health options, and she finally said, okay, I'm going to try Shackley. And I've seen that over and over again as other alternatives don't work for them, but also in the business. There have been people that I have seen one, two years ago that I thought were potentially really good business partners that all of a sudden, you know, decided maybe this is something that I want to do, um, which is really exciting to think about um, how those not yet, just remember and hold on to that, and how people take control of their fears and replace them with faith and remember that they can do it. Um, I also think, and what Stephanie does a really good job with, Stephanie Bruce on her team, transferring your belief to them. So she's created this beautiful Facebook group team page for her team. And one thing that I noticed that she was doing such a good job of was she was giving recognition for her team. Yeah. Members. She was mm -hmm. saying, way to go, Cindy, on hitting mm -hmm. X amount of TV this month. You're rocking it. Way mm -hmm. to go, so-and-so. You invited 10 people on the call. And she was, she was verbally praising them. And that was something that I want to do more of. But something that Harper and, again, Moira and Barb and all my whole team, has what they've done, even just little gifts. It doesn't have to be something super expensive, but even just sending little gifts and saying something like a Starbucks gift card, your your business is brewing, way to go. Um, or perhaps I can still remember when Harper gave me um, cards, handwritten cards that I could send to customers um, that she personalized, which meant so much. And she's given me energy juice before, which has been so helpful. In the <laughs> um, but different things like that, it doesn't have to be, you know, crazy expensive, but it just lets them know, hey, I'm thinking about you, I think you're doing wonderful, and I appreciate you. So as we think of transferring your belief to them, focus on the good and the people that you coach, pull out their strengths. We all have strengths and we all have weaknesses, so focus on that. Help them focus on those strengths that they have. See the people as you want them to be. Reinforce their value and the and importance of what they do. There's going to be times when they're going to need that reminder of why they're in the business because they're feeling discouraged or perhaps somebody canceled an auto ship or perhaps somebody said no to the business and they decided to join another business. That's going to happen. That's Like Barb said, that's part of the process. But remember to focus on all the yeses, to focus on all of the potential in front of them, to focus on the glass being full, that that our possibilities truly are endless. I will tell you, I've ran into the to people in the oddest situations that have been <laughs> interested in Shackley. For example, um, I was just walking, uh, taking a walk with my kids, and I ran into a woman who's a, one of my best customers who loves Shackley, and we became great dear friends because um, I was just out walking. And so you just never know the potential of, of hmm. who you're going to reach. Hmm. And then create an environment for growth and talk to about this a little bit with Stephanie, you can create a wonderful Facebook team page where they can um, ask questions and need advice and seek guidance on different issues, um, how to help somebody with this, or what would you do in this situation. And I love it because I hear so many different perspectives and you hear testimonies of people and it's just a great resource. So create one of those for your team page and communicate with your team regularly. So check in with them, make sure... Um, that our check-ins are over the phone. Um, I think that's so important. Barb has always modeled that for me, that um, a lot of people will check in with their team on a Monday and then on a Friday. So Monday kind of sets the week and, hey, what do you got going on? What can I help you with? Is there anything that you need? And then Friday as we get into the weekend, hey, how did the week go? Um, is there anything that you need to talk about, anything you need to troubleshoot? Um, so that's really important. You can do recognition newsletters, which is really exciting. Um, conference calls are a great way of getting the team together and collaborating with one another that you can do. Create opportunities for fun and for fellowship. This is what I love about, again, about the conferences is you can make it a weekend event. I know um, with Chicago being local to us, that's really nice, but I know that we've had a lot of people who fly in or who make it an actual road trip. They come in from all over the country to come to Chicago Regionals. We're just really lucky that it's nice and close. But you can make it a whole weekend, and you can go into Chicago and spend the day. I know Crystal Gossett, who's in Shackley, she makes it a whole weekend for her team. And on Sunday, it's just strictly fun. 
and they just go uh, out and have fun together. And that uh, creates a team atmosphere, too. Mm-hmm. Um, listen to them, stay in touch, hear their concerns and their ideas, celebrate their success. And recognition can mean more than a paycheck, which is so important. That at the end of the day, a lot of people just want to be recognized and want to be heard. Um, and then lastly, believe in them. We've talked about this. People need someone to believe in them before they can believe in themselves. Mm-hmm. Believing that they can be an executive coordinator or a key or a master, you just have no idea who that next person is that could be your master coordinator down the road. And develop people, not just leaders, is the most rewarding part of the business. Oh, well done. Very Thanks, good. Katie. Lisa. Very good. All right, so I'm going to talk about just a couple of pitfalls that can happen in coaching. Um, and uh, I think as we talk about them, you all go, aha, that makes very good sense. It's just something we need to learn. And I think most of us have to work at it because it's, it can be a, a natural thing. Um, so we want to avoid the command and control attitude. And this whole <laughs> idea of my way to the highway definitely does not work in Shackley. So I was actually talking to Elena Panos over the weekend. We had our second ground swell. And we just got to talk about things. And, and she said, you know, it's true. It's one of the very best things about this business is that you get to be your own boss but we all have to remember that our downline gets to be their own boss too so we are not the boss we are we are the support we are the coach we are the leader but we're not in charge and we don't get to micromanage or even manage we get to be in a different role so it's important to identify that and be real clear um, it's because it'll backfire so here's some examples of uh, where you would coach or you would help someone work through some things. So you can kind of put your upline uh, hat on and I think uh, both Katie and Harper have referred to this. You really want to let them empty their bucket. I think for me, I'm such a, a solver and kind of a mover and I want to plan, plan and move, move. I was really struggled with this. I struggled working with my downline, giving them time to uh, to to let out what was going on. And I have really had to work hard to develop this capacity and I'm still working on it. But you really need to let them empty their bucket. And you can't let them empty their bucket if you're solving all their problems, right? So you have to just mm. ask some questions, give them space, and relax into the moment where they let it come out. And you know what the coolest thing is about this is when it starts to come out, you can really see the the, the backstory about what's going on with them. And you really have capacity then together to start to create some solutions that hold, you know, doctors of solutions. So. As leaders, we're not necessarily solving their problem, but we're empowering them. So here's some things that you don't want to say to them. Uh, and I, I hear this a lot from a lot of different uh, successful leaders in Shackley, but this is a judgment-free zone, and it's especially oh, that's good. with mm. your downline. Your downline will automatically start to judge themselves, and sometimes they start to imagine that you're judging them. So you need to come in with a voice that's different than that. So don't say things that can come across critical. You know, and here's some exa- ideas. Well, obviously you did something wrong. Well, why didn't you do this? Well, we always tell you to do this steps when inviting. Don't say <laughs> those I, things. Didn't I tell you the way you're supposed to do it? Right. Or you don't come to training. So if you come to trainings, you'd learn these things. Oh, you know? that's a good one. <laughs> so as leaders, we have to learn that, that when working with our downline, it really is all about them and where they're at. And we don't get to kind of, we don't want to put them in that place. We really do want to come. Um, create a place where they feel valued and safe because they've got to work through stuff. So it's important to let them know that you're working through things with them. So here's just a few uh, good kind of verbiage. A lot of times I'll work with people and I'll say, let's just talk through all the things you did and maybe together we can come up with some ways that you can tweak it. So I'm not saying, you know, I'm going to tell you how to do it right because you did it wrong. I'm going to say, let's figure this out together. Tell me the steps you took. What could be done differently? And then I'll use a lot of the language of, you know what? So and so does it this way. And I've always been really impressed with how they do it. I've learned a lot from watching them. Or, you know, one of the things I learned when I was, uh, you know, kind of getting some of these things going in my business is that if I did this and this. So you can be really gentle. Learn to ask questions. Mm-hmm. Learn to let them share what they're thinking. I'll tell you one of the biggest problems when you want to come in and fix it, if you if you fix it too quick, you solve the wrong problem. So you really do have to allow them to, to get out what's going on. There's always a, a reason behind what you're seeing externally. You need to get to that. So Sometimes it helps, too, to say to somebody, I think, 
Um, well, let, let's let's do a little pretending here. What if someone in your group or downline came to you with this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. issue or problem or situation? Oh, what, that's good. What would you say to them? Mm -hmm. How would you help them through this? Mm -hmm. Mm. That's really good, and and sometimes mm -hmm. it is appropriate then to share some of the uh, I think yeah. the other slides called them war stories, but to say, listen, oh. I mean the truth is is we all have some pretty dis right. big disappointments, mm. and so uh, I'll say, gosh, one time I did this, and we almost always end up laughing about some of the crazy things. <laughs> oh my we goodness! Go yeah. Yeah. But I think the key is is they need to know that they're normal. They need to know mm -hmm. that this is what we go through. And you need to let them know that it's worth working through. It's worth going through this stuff. So uh, mm. you get to be right alongside them, kind of feeling the pain with them, but letting them know that it's temporary and that they're doing a great job. And what, one of the best ideas right here is before you make a phone call, before you set up an event, before you take any action in Shackley, you ask yourself, what is my objective for this mm -hmm. phone call? What mm -hmm. is my objective for this event? And when you do that, you line up in your brain where you're gonna, how you're gonna close it. You know what you're, and it, it just keeps everything um, in in line with your perspective. And so, you know, uh, over time, we run into these wonderful quotes, and I love this one. It was sometimes being listened to feels so much like being loved oh. it is impossible to tell the difference oh, and so I think that's I think that's what a huge attraction is not only for our distributors but for our customers too is that we take time and listen to them and care about them I I, I, I can remember it I have a couple of customers that um, one of them she's in her 90s and when her husband I've never met her and when her husband died, I was one of the first people she called. Wow. And I, and, I, and I realized, you know, we don't realize the impact we have on people until something like that happens. Yes, right? yes. Joe? Joe? Yes. Can't you hear me? Yes, yes. I can hear you, but you're oh. not talking. <laughs> I was momentarily distracted. I don't know, we've really covered a lot with this about turning disappointments into opportunities for learning. And to me, it's when there are disappointments, setbacks, when we're coaching people, we're the leader. We don't chide, we don't scold, we don't correct. You know, we help them through a discovery of how they could maybe do some things differently and how what 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 can you take away from this? What have you learned from this? Oh, and Kevin, when he was on a few weeks ago, didn't he say, um, Congratulations. <laughs> Welcome yeah, well, to Anxious. I've been waiting for you to get here. Yeah. To anxious. <laughs> I've been waiting for you to get here. Because that's yeah. when you learn the most. Yeah. 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 Very good. Okay. And then this one, Joe? This came out of that um, training. That yeah. Talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that when people are stuck and they've emptied their cup, and sometimes, you know, I have, I've learned that, that that's all people want me for. They just want me there. They want to talk to somebody to, to empty their cup. They really don't need a lot of maybe uh, answers or solutions from me. They just want to talk something out. Mm -hmm. But when, uh, when it's appropriate and when it works, then we need to get them back to what is, what's their reason, what's their passion, what's their motivation for doing Shackley. And, um, like we say here, if they don't know their why, then there's no point in offering ideas on how to move forward. Uh, Mike and I just recently had to walk away from somebody that we had been working with and coaching and really thought this person that they were with us and, and were saying all the right things. And um, they ran into some disappointments and they really didn't know why they were doing Shackley. It was like, I don't, I'm not sure. Well, yeah. you know, then it's, you know, Great, you know, call us when you do know. Kind yeah. of I didn't say that, but that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Thank heavens. Okay, Lisa. All right. So, uh, and I, I kind of alluded to this. You want to create again a relationship, a safe place. One of the things that I found for me is if I had a bunch of frustration and built up kind of angst and difficulty, I really had a hard time moving into then a relaxed, safe place for my leaders. So I did need to find a place where I could really work my stuff out uh, and and kind of get through some of my own things so that I could be kind of free of of my own frustration yeah. so that I could listen. Yeah. So I think that's an important piece to notice when or note when you're coaching downline 
and make sure you're you're taking care of yourself too. Otherwise, you'll really have an internal battle of trying to kind of hide your own difficulties, if that makes sense. So, these are some good points. Uh, share your own challenges. Share challenges of other people. We can learn from those. Be humble. Don't self-promote. Don't don't feel like part of being a leader is being an expert. Because first of all. It's really hard to be an expert, you know, really no one is perfect. And second of all, that's not what they need to know how great you're at it. They already think you're great at it. They need to know that they can get good at it. So be humble and share the real pieces of what you've dealt with and, and what you, you know, sometimes even what you're dealing with. Um, I like the third party validation. It's a very good way to do it. So sometimes even though maybe I'm having a, the idea or I think of it or I'm even teaching people, I'll say, you know, um, this is something I've really learned from, from this person or so and so said this because it lets them know that I'm just like them. I'm just learning, you know. I, I, I didn't wake up being good at this. <laughs> you know, I didn't start being good at this. I'm still getting good at this, right? So uh, it's just important to be real and create mm. that and then let them know that you're their advocate. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, again, I love this. Eric Gorey talks about this. You know, y you are the key to your success. You're being successful or failing, and this business is on you. That's not really my job. My job is to be here for you, and I'll give you the best I have to offer. So, and again, never criticize. So, just creating that healthy, safe place. So, here's a few things that drive business partners away. I think this is a really, really <laughs> beneficial slide because sometimes we don't realize this. Disappointments, feeling like a failure, and not having someone come in and help them recover from that. So you're you don't want to leave them in that disappointment. Um, Harper mentioned it. Stay close because if they're mm -hmm. isolated and disappointed, you know they they might be a dying plant, and you don't want that to happen. Right. You need to water them and mm -hmm. to build them back That's up. Right. Give them some sunshine, right? Mm -hmm. um, lack of support, criticism. And, you know, help them work through what they need to work through and then get them right back into the fun of it uh, and then commit to them and commit to kind of walk through the rough stuff. Remind them and bring them back to their vision and their purpose. And like, boy, Joe, that's a, a powerful story you just shared because if you if you want to do this and you really can't get ba them back to their why or their vision, yeah. you start to recognize that really is the backstory. That's really mm -hmm. what's going on here, right? And by the way, this is why it's so important to keep your head in the soup. Uh -huh. Maybe it's your head in the game, but it's um, because you you want to hear the stories so that you this is where you insert them when you're having these conversations with people. You want to tell them the stories of all not only your own adversity that you've overcome, but you know it, it, tell them about Joe's and Harper's and you know because yeah. because they'll know then that. The, and, and say, you would think that's bad. Why do you hear about my friend Joe? What happened to her? Oh my goodness. You know, and, um, and in fact, I don't have time to tell you this story, but remind me to tell you the story of the Connecticut woman next time because um, okay. I, I even had traveled to Connecticut and worked with, <laughs> with this couple. And then uh, remind me, I'll tell you the story next time. At any rate, I, uh, did we finish this one? Yes, we did. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Harper, here's another great quote. Can I say something about the last slide real quick? Yeah, now? yeah, yeah. Um, so I feel like, you know, losing sight of the vision and purpose, and this is one of the reasons it's so important um, to have that conversation about about why, why you're doing this. And even just recently, I was talking with um, someone on our team, um, and just their why really impacted me, and, it, and knowing what their why, and so when we were talking, you know, just telling them, like, that, that what they wanted to accomplish really impacted me, and that I still think about wanting to help them um, reach those goals for that time with their family, and so it really was, like, to, you know, to remind them of what they're doing, and so, but we have to know that, and we have to really, um, America. know what they want to be able to encourage them in that. Um, uh -huh. So um, Zig Ziglar says that you can have everything in life you want if you help others get what they want. And I think uh -huh. that that's really true. And the greatest um, legacy that we can leave a downline of people um, is a downline of people who are happier, healthier, and more yeah. successful because of us. And really being able to to encourage people and help people. And, um, and that is why this business is so beautiful is because that's, that's how how we grow, and that's how we um, 
get to do any of these things that we get to do, whether it's going on the trips or, you know, helping the finances of our income, is all because we're helping people. And whether we're helping people, um, you know, with their health, of course, but also being able to help people reach those goals themselves. Yeah, and it's yeah. exciting. And, and grow as people, absolutely. And that brings us to our action steps, Lise. All right, so you want to prepare for spring regionals and the special drawings. Don't you love all these prizes? Prizes make life so much fun. There's a special drawing for bringing people, uh, two or more guests on Friday night, for a chance to win $500 for Global Conference. Um, I love this point that Barb put into the action steps because it's a good one. Identify where, where and what you would like to learn next about leadership. Uh, you listen to these gals share, and these gals are growing, and they're always talking about who they're listening to in this podcast in this book and they're growing because they're striving to learn about leadership and that's why they're successful so this is a big key and I love it um, look for a mentor or someone that you can really coach with um, I think this is a part to being healthy and making sure you're in the right space so don't neglect yourself because you need that uh, good books are out there you got uh, Harper's out here My michaelhyatt.com um, I, Andy Stanley, I think, is the one that I've been listening to. I really like him too. Uh, make sure you. What's his name? Andy Stanley. A -N -D -D Andy Stanley. Oh, what a. I that's his name. I could be making that up, the but I think name. that's really Okay, his name. I'll write it down. Okay. I got a tip from. He's a pastor of a really large church in. Um, Georgia. Uh, yes, Georgia. Okay. That's yeah. He's okay. got some good stuff. I really, yes. I really liked it. So, okay. And you know what? Here's the cool thing about the day we're living in. You can go for a 10-minute walk and listen to a 10-minute little podcast and um, just grow your brain. It is so uh -oh. awesome. So, well, and, for, and, that, and that is something that is to take into consideration that, like, yeah, books are hard for me. Like, I have a hard time finding mm -hmm. time to sit down and read a book, but mm -hmm. I can listen to mm -hmm. a lot of similar information. You know, I listen to these podcasts while I'm working out and um, yeah. or while I'm, mm -hmm. you know, doing this or that. And so mm -hmm. just m being creative with it, like, because being creative, exactly, yeah. you know, I, you know, I can tell Barb, I can say, oh, I don't have time to read books. Or mm -hmm. I can say, okay, how can I fit this into my mm -hmm. life? Exactly. Yeah. I can't. I can't. I don't have any time. I can't. I can't. And so anytime you find yourself saying can't, snap a rubber band on your wrist. <laughs> because <laughs> because you're telling your brain to shut down. Exactly right. right. Oh, Harper, you are so quick. I, I love it. You learn <laughs> I love it. And okay. you find a solution. You find a solution. Yes, 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 yes. Very okay. good. And then we just want to remind you that the trip qualifications began at the beginning of the month. It's just still early, so get your eye on the ball, make your plan, and run for it because um, you'll love it and you'll love what happens to your business because of it. So, all right. Okay. Good stuff. Um, Joe, for some reason, my, um, my, um, Dashboard disappeared, so you're going to have to field the questions. Oh, I wonder where it went. I don't There's know. There's some good where, questions how it, here. <laughs> how does it go? It's like, what is this? Yeah. Uh, oh, um, weird. Here's a question on, uh, do we use First Step Resource Guide with new mm. people and say, uh, having a copy also? Yes. Yes. I do. Yeah. There's, yeah, a lot I of, there's a lot of good um a lot of good dialogues in there too, but it 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 walks through those basic steps that we talked about the process. Right. Yep. The only caveat I, I think, would have is, don't think you have to get somebody through the whole first step resource guide before they can start doing things. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, just and use I think it. Shackley sends it now in a zip drive that you can get sure. and then print it at home. Right. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's good. a request for more on strategy sessions. Yeah. Okay. Actually, Lisa, you know, you know, we made us do another another session, uh, uh -huh. strategy session, because Lisa um, put together even the. Th that's what we were going to do today, and then we realized that <laughs> <laughs> we got sidelined by this. Nothing awesome else. Coach. We're flexible over here, <laughs> as we realized that this greater discussion first about. Yeah about leadership and the role of the leader is probably where, where we had to begin. Um, but she wrote out like the questions that we ask in a strategy session. You yeah. know, the, and understand what we just said. It's the questions that we ask. A strategy session is not a lecture from us to them. Right. It is a noodling together about, it's like, okay, I always start out and say, tell me where you are. Okay, tell me where your business is at. Tell me mm -hmm. where you are. And I, you know, the tell me about, right, mm -hmm. that we talk about. And tell me about where your business is at and tell me where you are 
where you are at, mm -hmm. where, yeah. and because if they say, "Oh, I'm overwhelmed," this, I'm, I'm expecting a baby, we're moving, we're you know, then don't you know set a goal for them to be a key coordinator tomorrow morning because they can't handle that. It right. just say, "Then tell me what would you like to do." Tell me, and what's in, and then so you start with that part, and then you go to what would you like to learn next? What would you like to get better at? That's a lovely question. Mm -hmm. But you don't say to them, now you know what you're going to need to learn is. Right. See the difference? It's all about questions that yeah. opens up their thinking. And, and, and one of my leaders, she was so good. The other day she said, you know what I realized is that I say I'm going to do things and then I don't do it. I put it off. And I'm thinking like, well, you and everybody else in the world. But, <laughs> but, you know, but, but, but she realized that. And yeah. then she said, I want you to help me with that. Now that was, pro as That's opposed good. to me saying, you know, the problem with you is, you say you're going to do something and then you don't do it. Do you hear the difference? You know, yeah. it's like, yeah. and so coaching, when we say asking questions and coaching, questions are for the purpose of guiding the thinking. Mm -hmm. That's the purpose, and it turns on the creativity for both of us. I mean, one of the things you you know, Joe has said uh, the the words that she most hates to hear is when I call or send an email and say <laughs> I'm. I've got an idea. You know, it's like, oh no, because it usually means work for her. But, uh, <laughs> but, it, but it's interesting when you have, what, you know, there are certain people. That's why I love working with with Joe and now Lisa and Harper and Katie. And we're going to be bringing other folks in to join us. Um, I spent some wonderful time in Michigan. Teresa Radke will be joining us soon, and Colleen right. DeGainer. There's some wonderful leaders around the country who are doing interesting things that you know. We're, when you bring people like that together, you just you pop ideas for each other, you know. Like you'll, and that's what brainstorming is about. It's like just get creative and don't criticize the idea that comes up because I know there's a part of Joe that's thinking, oh, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. But you know, you write it down and then you figure out, you know, maybe that'll. That'll create another idea, you know, and that's where so much of what happens on Thursday mornings comes from. It's, yeah, yeah. it's very, it's really powerful when you work together like that. And let me just well, piggyback on that question real quick. So the person who asked the question about the strategy session, I mean, just in, in case you need to know, like today, Barb's, what she explained was kind of the assessment period where you're assessing where they're at, where they want to go. Then you do go to a little goal talking and then you create their plan. So in my mind, you see this three pieces to the strategy session where you deal with where they're at, you let them empty their bucket, you assess, then you goal and then you plan. So. Sorry, I just want to go goals and go ahead, That's Joe. good. So that in a three-step process, that's good. Mm -hmm. we'll, this, we'll, put, we'll put something together. It's kind of answered this next question. How do you handle downline distributors who say they want to work to a director but seem to lack motivation? And if you don't ask them to do things, they don't without micromanaging them. You need to sit down and have that strategy session. You know, yeah. let's yeah. let's talk about what what Shackley can be for you. What could it mean in mm -hmm. your life? You got to find out what their why is. First. Yeah, you and go, you go back to, be, to the what do you want question. Right, mm -hmm. and they need to be integral in creating their own plan because then your role right. is just to remind them of their plan. It's not your plan that you're telling them to do. You help they help well, you good. because we're together. They are integral. They create the plan, and then you just remind them how's your plan going, and that right. helps transfer the ownership. <laughs> I've oh I've learned this all the hard way. You transfer the ownership onto them for their own actions instead of you telling them what to do. Mm -hmm. And so, sometimes if you, if you don't people, ask, they won't get in touch with it. Right. Yeah, right. That's the wonderful thing is see see one of the worst things that happens when you know there was a slide earlier about not managing, you know, not falling into a man but you know, it was like um, uh, leaders model behavior, they don't manage, sit back and manage others and tell them what to do. Is that the the, the danger of that is this is to send out a broadcast email or a broadcast Facebook message and, and expect people to respond to that. Uh, this is where it's it's very individual like how are you? Yes. Yeah. How are you? Where are you? What do you want to do? And now you'll you'll hear the fears, you'll hear that there's stuff going on in their personal lives. Guess what? People have personal lives. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and then some, sometimes we have to just face the fact, too, that even though people tell us that they want to do the business, they want to be a director, they want to earn this amount of income, 
I mean, who who doesn't want to do those things? Mm-hmm. But many times they don't want to do the things that need to be done, and they're really not a candidate. We'd like them yeah. to be. They aren't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. This is such a good conversation. I mean, you could even ask someone when you're sitting down with them, what's going what's going well in your business and what, what's yeah. not going well? I mean, yeah. all this exploratory stuff, but it really helps you get to the meat of the matter. So. Right, right. Uh, where can I find these slides? Um, same I'll place I always that. can. If I would stop clicking <laughs> everything here. <laughs> if you go to uh, Bob's Files. That, Bob's files dot net or future, better future starts today dot com. So those of you who have the better health in thirty one days dot com, it's just the sister um, website to that. Um, and and what I and that is where the podcasts are of these sessions. So yeah, yeah, that's the the subscription one that you can get individually with your picture and your webmaster. You know, we'll put that together, or you can do it jointly. But um, Chris now and Michelle are starting their own Shackley business, so they they only um, accept subscriptions. I think it's three times a month or something like that. So just put yourself on their waiting list, and they'll get to you on it. Yeah. Uh, a suggestion here that even after events, we can <clears throat> ask ourselves, how could I have improved this for next time? And that's yeah. a good question. Every time. How do you know when to continue to encourage, support, try to coach people, and when to recognize that this just isn't something they're going to do right now? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's when they don't do anything. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. When they quit moving, they totally quit moving. Right. Yeah, that's the love of where they are. You know, um, in fall of 2013, in November or December, there were. I think two sessions that we did with Master Coordinator Dan Henderson. When you are at a place where you are coaching people, uh, Harvard was just saying, I got to go back and listen to those again because um, he talked about just that question about we need to know if they are a, a red light or a green light, but a yellow light, we don't know what to do with that. So you, a- you ask them, you know, and my group is used to this, you know, I'll call and say, tell me. I mean, I'm thinking about Becky Choate. You know, she um, two years ago, over the last two years, she had major family events. I mean, an an out-of-state move. You know, um, health issues in her family, kids going off to college and having you know stuff they're doing. Now she's got a wedding coming up. And I would say, Becky, where are you in your business? And she'd say, I am just hanging in, right? I say, fine. Then I go away and Mm -hmm. love her where she's at. And then when when I called her this August, she said, I'm ready. You know, we're settled, we're in a good place, the kids are in a good place, we're in a good place. And what what did we the first step was put her into an accountability circle. Mm-hmm. So that you are with like minded people who are committed to the, to growing. Everybody needs that. That's how you get that co mentoring thing that we were talking about earlier. And look at what's happened to her in in inside of six months. Her P V went from five thousand a month to seven thousand. <laughs> No, God bless you. No oh, small thing. Me. And and she has um, developed her first her first um, director, and a second one is already uh, an associate and headed toward a second director. She'll wow. be a coordinator in in less than a year after she made that decision, and because all of the infrastructure was in place, right? Go you know? Becky! So, yay! Yay That's Becky! Awesome. But but you know it's like she wasn't ready yet. You know so. But what are you going to do? Say, come on, Becky, come on, get you know, you are you waiting for you? Know, you know, and that would just drive her away. Yeah. It would just drive her away. Love yeah. them where they are and keep keep oh. moving. Okay. Anything Here's a else, recommendation Jill? for a book. Uh, your every word has power. Uh, it addresses what you are speaking about. How to frame a question or a statement in a positive way that elicits positive feelings and responses. Nice. That's Every great. word right. has power. That's by Yvonne Oswald. O S W A L D. Oswald. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Uh, well, tons of questions. Here. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't. Where that dashboard went? Yeah. Could help you with that. It's a, and every time I click, it just moves the. Oh. Mm. Well, and then there's yeah. another book recommended here that ans- questions are the answers. Another book. Oh, that's good. That's by Alan Pease, P-E-A-S-E. Nice. 
questions. I want to write that down. Questions. I have to tell you, I just right. love the book that Katie turned us on to, The Rock Your Network Marketing Business by um, Sarah Robbins. And there's a little statement she makes towards the end of the book that I just grabbed onto. And she says, don't do for your downline what they can do for themselves. And mm -hmm. it's, it's appropriate for this conversation because it really is all about empowering your leaders. We, we work alongside them and we help them, but we don't do for them what they can do because no. we want them to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I just, so thank you, Katie. I think of you every week because I love that book. My whole team's reading that book. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, Barb, do you have the slide for Monday night wellness webinars to bring up? Oh, oh. maybe. I think you do. Is it like down here? There ah, there it oh. is. Oh, <laughs> where? <laughs> I think we're doing nurses there. Um, for yes. for oh gosh, that's next week. It's no, that's two weeks. You got a yeah, week. We got two yeah. weeks. Okay, we got a week. Oh, <laughs> lots, of, lots of time. What's the problem here? Oh, well, yeah. well, I had a very interesting conversation with Janelle Devlin. Oh, she's so good. And she um uh she told me that she's been in Shackley ten years. And how many kids does she have? Two. She's got two. Yes. yes. Two. Two kids. And she said when her Shackley business, working it part time, exceeded her income as a nurse full time. She she realized it was time to <laughs> it was time to let that one go, yeah. To make a, to make a shift, and and um and so I asked her about incomes across the country for nurses, and she thought it was around forty six thousand dollars a year, and boy, I'll tell you, that is a tough profession. They she said hard. that that most nurses are working unless they're in a medical office. She said they are working twelve hour shifts in hospitals and she said if you can get away after 12 hours because sometimes you're in the middle of working with the patient and she said and almost all of that is you're on your feet and they don't let them, this, is, this should be legal, they don't let them go to the bathroom. And we had a gal, Sharon uh, Graswell, yeah. last week who's a nurse. She yeah. said they'll work eight hours before they can eat, drink, or go to the bathroom. Yeah. Well, I couldn't have been a nurse no matter what because I had they to go to the bathroom. Right. Right. They, don't, they, don't, they don't have breaks. They do yeah. not have breaks. I, I mean, it, is quite, it, it was really interesting. So it's helpful, though, for us to understand the inside story mm -hmm. of of mm -hmm. these various professions, because then we'll know what to offer people. You know, yeah. when we when we approach people who are nurses. And by the way, even after we learn that, remember, we cannot solve a problem that they don't acknowledge. Right. So, yeah, but yeah. us knowing it, at least we know to ask the questions, is like, tell me about your job. I heard that mm -hmm. you know, nurses are working like 12-hour shifts, then you've opened the door to let them tell you what's wrong mm -hmm. with, their, with their business. But you know what? Nurses love helping people and many of them, we've had nurses in our group who have said one of the big motivations for them is by the time people land in the hospital, sometimes it's, it's so much damage has occurred that what they want to, they long to be part of the prevention side so people don't get yes, that, it, that far right. gone, you know, so yes, I yes. really, really love that. Good. Okay. Uh, here, here's just one, a suggestion from Donnie Herman I thought was a good one after having people empty their cups, then ask them, how would you like your cup filled? Oh, that's good. See, I thought that was in, good. In my you group, know, how can we, we fill to, your cup up? That's good. In our in our group, we have to empty our buckets because we have a lot more than would fit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a okay, big bucket. <laughs> oh, but that's good. Very good. Mm -hmm. I think we got. Uh, uh, Carol Hurst said, "Teachers do not get breaks either." No, that's right. You can't leave the classroom and say, "Be back in ten minutes." I need lots of breaks all the time. <laughs> I know. I know. Thank goodness I found Jackley. My goodness. I know. More information than we need, Lisa. There. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think that's a wrap. Uh, this was a good session. Oh, you all were just wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. And next week. Next week. What's next week? The long-awaited session with Lisa about key yes. uh, key elements of the in-home yes. meetings, and um, yes, we want to talk about um, home meetings, about uh, grand openings, about um, women's health, children's health, all these wonderful you know gathering people around the table. We we've got that um, down to a to, to quite a science. 
that we've learned. We learned it actually from the Facebook tasting, uh, the Facebook tasting, the <laughs> exactly 180 tasting. <laughs> or you can taste Facebook. I don't know. <laughs> uh, can you tell? Yesterday was the lawn was a was the grandchild day. <laughs> oh gosh! All right. Thank you, everybody. We sure Have love a great you. Week. Thanks for joining us. Alrighty. Bye bye. Bye bye. Goodbye.